everyone, this is Nathan Guzman and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are still on the curvilinear motion, but this time we are going to use a normal and tangential component. So, without further ado, let's begin. One of the common definitions of curvilinear motion uses path variables, which are measurements made along the tangent and normal to the path of the body. Itong coordinates na to provide a very natural definition para sa ating curvilinear motion and are frequently the most direct and pinaka-convenient coordinates na maaari natin gamitin in solving curvilinear motion problems. And let's take a look at this figure. Considering this broken line is the path of the curvilinear motion, this broken line here, ito, this is the normal coordinates for point A and this is the tangent normal of Normal at point B, tangent at point B, normal at point C, and tangent at point C. The N and T coordinates or the normal and tangential components are considered to move along the path with the particle. Makikita nga natin dito sa figure na ito. Kung saan yung ating particle nag-start siya dito, nag-advance sa point A to point B to point C and hanggang dito continuously. Yung positive direction for N at any position is always taken toward the center of curvature of the path. The positive N direction will shift from one side of the curve to the other side if the curvature changes direction. We will now use the components of the normal in the tangent to describe the velocity and the acceleration for the curvilinear motion ng ating body or A the particle. Let's start with the velocity. For this purpose, i-introduce natin yung unit vectors natin na tinatawag natin as the E sub N and the E sub T. Yung E sub N natin in the normal direction and yung E sub T natin in the T direction. And this is our figure. Yung E sub T natin is located here. So this is our E sub T. And yung E sub N natin is eto. During the differential increment of our time or the dt, yung particle natin ay magmove a differential distance ds, eto yun, ds, along the curve from a to a prime. Now, with the radius of curvature ng path of the position designated by rho, eto yung radius of curvature natin, makikita natin na yung ds is equal to rho times derivative of beta. Eto yung ating beta. In ating ds daw is equal to rho times derivative of the beta. Where yung beta natin is in radians, it is unnecessary to consider the differential change sa ating rho between A and A prime. Kasi ang higher order term would be introduced ay mawawala using the limit. Now, the magnitude of the velocity can be written as V is equal to ds over dt. And another is equal to the rho times the derivative of our beta over the derivative of time. Using these equations, we can write the velocity as the vector. And this is the formula. In the figure, our initial v is eto, and this is our v prime. Where eto yung ating normal component, and this is the tangential component. For the acceleration, we already know that the definition of the acceleration is A equals the derivative of dv and the derivative of the velocity over the derivative of time. And we observe that the acceleration is a vector na magre-reflect both sa change ng magnitude and direction ng ating velocity. And if we differentiate the velocity by applying the ordinary rule for the derivative of the product of a scalar and a vector, makukuha natin as eto. Derivative of the velocity times the e tangential natin over derivative of time. And this is now equal to v times e tangential prime plus v prime times e tangential. Where yung unit vector natin na e tangential now has a non-zero derivative dahil dun sa pagbabago ng direction. And para mahanap yung E prime tangential, i-analyze natin that yung change ng E tangential natin during the differential increment ng motion as the particle moves from A to point A, yung unit vector correspondingly changes to E tangential prime from E tangential to E tangential prime 
And yung vector difference natin na derivative of e tangential shown in this figure, eto yung ating derivative of e tangential. This is the e tangential and this is the e prime tangential. Yung vector na derivative of e tangential in the limit has a magnitude equal to the length of the arc. Eto nga yun is obtained by swinging the unit vector e tangential through the angle derivative of beta expressed in radians. In this figure, sa second figure natin, these are v, and this will be the v prime. These are derivative of the velocity, and this is the derivative of v tangential, and this is the derivative of v at normal. Ito, itong araw na to, this is the acceleration normal. Ito naman yung ating acceleration tangential and this is our main acceleration. Yung direction ng derivative of E tangential natin ay makukuha natin from the E normal. Thus, pwede natin isulat yung derivative of E tangential as E normal times the derivative of R angle beta. Dividing by derivative of beta, makukuha natin ang formula for E normal as derivative of E tangential over the derivative of R beta in radians. And dividing by derivative of time both sides, maglalagay tayong derivative of time dito as well as dito din. May rewrite natin yan as eto. From the substitution of this formula and the B prime from the relation V is equal to rho times B prime, yung acceleration natin will become etong form na ito. A is equal to V square over rho times E normal plus V prime times E tangential where yung ating A normal is equal to V square over Rho is equal to Rho times beta prime, sorry this is square, is equal to V times beta prime. And yung ating A tangential is equal to V prime equals the S double prime or yung ating yung, yung S na yan is our position. And to solve for the main acceleration, Pythagorean theorem lang ulit ang ating gagawin, square root of our A normal square plus A tangential square. Take note again that yung ating A tangential is the time rate of change of the velocity V natin. Mas maintindihan natin na malinaw itong formula na to if we see the geometry of the physical changes na dinidescribe ng formula na yan. So let's go to the geometric interpretation. Yung previous figure natin kanina, pinapakita yun na yung ating velocity vector ay simply V lang when the particle is at point A and V prime kapag nasa A prime na din siya. And reminder, the vector change in the velocity natin ay yung tinatawag natin as dv or the derivative of the velocity at siya yung nagbibigay ng direction sa ating acceleration a. The end component of dv is labeled as derivative of v normal. And in the limit, yung kanyang magnitude ay equal sa length of the arc generated by sa pagsiswing ng ating vector v as a radius through the angle derivative of beta natin. Therefore, yung ating dvn is equal to the velocity times the derivative of r beta where this dvn is an absolute and yung component ng yung normal component ng acceleration natin na an is equal to dvn absolute ulit kasi we don't take negative over dt and this is equal again to v times the derivative of beta over derivative of time. Simplifying, this is equal to velocity times beta prime as before. The t component of dv naman natin at labeled as derivative of v tangential. And yung magnitude nito is simply the change in the derivative of the velocity in the magnitude or length of the velocity vector natin. Therefore, yung t-component natin for acceleration is a tangential is equal to derivative of 
velocity over derivative of time equals v prime, the first derivative ng ating velocity, and the second derivative ng ating position as before. The acceleration natin, yung acceleration vectors resulting from the corresponding vector changes in velocity. And yun nga nakikita natin sa previous formula natin for the acceleration. We have an important rule for our normal component of the acceleration, AN. Yung AN natin is always directed toward the center of the curvature C. The tangential component ng acceleration natin, on the other hand, will be in the positive tangential direction of the motion. Kung yung speed natin ay papataas, and yung negative direction natin, kung yung speed natin ay pababa. Let's take a look at this figure again. Tinapakita na figure na to yung schematic representations ng variation ng acceleration vector natin for a particle moving from point A to point B. Makikita natin dito sa first figure natin, let's say this is figure A, na increasing yung ating speed. We have an increasing speed. Dito naman sa figure B, Decreasing yung ating speed. So, at any inflection point dun sa curve natin, yung normal acceleration natin as v square over rho goes to zero. Bakit? Kasi yung rho natin ay magiging infinite. One of the most important and an special example of plane curvilinear motion natin ay yung tinatawag natin as the circular motion. Na kung saan, yung radius of curvature ng Circular motion natin or yung rho becomes the constant radius r of the circle. And yung angle beta natin is replaced by the angle theta measured from any convenient radial reference to center natin at any point from the curvilinear motion. So yung velocity natin at saka yung acceleration components natin for the circular motion of the particle becomes eto. Velocity is equal to r theta prime. Yung A normal natin or acceleration normal na natin is equal to V square over R and this is equal again to R theta prime square equals velocity times theta prime. Yung A tangential naman natin is equal to V prime is equal to yung A tangential naman natin is equal to V prime equals again to R theta double prime and ito po yung ating figure 4 the circular motion. Yung beta natin ay magiging theta, and again, ito pa rin yung ating A normal, and this is our A tangential. This is a center, and as I have said, yung ating radius of curvature na rho ay magiging constant radius na. One main example for uniform circular motion na palagi natin ginagamit or parati natin na-encounter when it comes to problem solving ay yung moving car with a constant speed around a road na basa and with banking eagle. Pwede mo yung example yan. Pwede natin ma-encounter yan for circular motion problems.